welcome back to the channel of ecovolix everyone so this is part 2 of the monetary policy if you haven't watched part 1 yet please first go and watch the part 1 to understand what is monetary policy so in part 2 we will be talking about the tools of monetary policy in details let's just get into the video so what are the tools of monetary policy the first tool is the repo rate So what is the repo rate? Repo rate is the rate at which banks borrow. The commercial banks basically borrow from RBI. So what happens is we all know that there is a credit creation process which happens in the commercial banks. So that goes a person, a depositor, to deposit to deposit his money, and that money is lended to the borrower. so in this process many times this can happen that the borrower has not returned enough money but the depositor needs his money back there is also extra demand by the borrowers so what does commercial bank do is whenever there is this crisis in the liquidity for them whenever they do not have money with them they would borrow it from rbi so when they borrow it from rbi they have to pay a cost of borrowing and that cost is the repo rate this is just like the simple interest rate you have to pay for a loan this is what commercial banks have to pay so repo rate is one of the two so by changing the repo rate the rbi can influence the monetary policy the second one is cash reserve ratio crr So CRR is basically that okay out of all the deposits a commercial bank is going to receive what percentage of deposits do they have to keep with RBI because if they do not keep some money with RBI if they lend all of their money there will be too much liquidity in the economy which will again affect prices the third is marginal standing facility so marginal standing facility is basically where you are provided a window for the commercial banks to borrow fund from rbi during emergency so it's a if you if there is a commercial bank who needs urgent basis pay they need money but for a very small period because they are going to receive back their own money so they take the marginal standing facility that for a shorter time they just borrow money from rbi The fourth one is reverse repo rate. Reverse repo rate is basically so if excess money is there with the commercial banks, how we, what will you do? Just like a simple person just goes to bank and deposit their money, commercial banks go to RBI to give their money to deposit their extra surplus money. So RBI has to pay the interest rate on that. The fifth is open market operations. Open market operation means there are government bonds which the RBI can sell or buy in order to either expand monetary supply or either to contract. Now we will be talking about each one of them in detail. Repo rate and reverse repo rate. As I have already told you, what is a repo rate and what is a reverse repo rate. So when we talk about repo rate it is the cost of borrowing a commercial bank has to pay so if the repo rate increases what will happen there will be a demotivation just a minute there will be a demotivation with the commercial banks to borrow money they will not be willing to borrow money because they have to pay a higher cost so if they are borrowing less they will be lending less to the consumers out there so eventually the liquidity will fall so increase in repo rate helps us to contract the money supply so whenever we have to go ahead with contractionary money supply whenever we have to go with contractionary money supply in that case we always increase the repo rate but if it comes to expansionary money supply then we decrease repo rate so after that reverse repo rate reverse repo rate is the opposite in this rbi pays interest rate to commercial bank so if if they if they are paying higher rate what will happen eventually 
you will the commercial banks will be more willing to give their money to RBI, which will decrease liquidity. If reverse repo rate is less, what will happen then? In that case, you will be less willing to give your money, so liquidity will increase. That is how they affect the monetary policy. Cash cash reserve ratio (CRR) a very important tool we all study. So CRR is basically that what percentage of your deposits a commercial bank is depositing with RBI. So if the CRR is high, if the CRR is high, what will eventually happen? That commercial banks have to increase the percentage of their deposit which they are going to give to RBI. So eventually their liquidity will decrease. So high CRR means fall in liquidity. So if liquidity will fall. then the credit creation process will slow and the monetary base of the economy will also fall so it controls the amount of money banks can lend and influences the overall money supply in the economy then open market operations so open market operations mein there are bonds or the government securities which we say so i would like to tell you one thing here if we talk about bonds if we talk about bonds when we talk about buyer of bond and there is another term seller of bond buyer of bond is the person who is buying the bond in return of lending money seller of the bond is the person who is selling the promise to get the money so buyer of the bond is the person who lends the money seller is the person who borrow the money so borrower is the seller so now what happens is if RBI goes to market so it through open market operation if they start selling bond so if they are selling bonds it means they are borrowing money so hence the liquidity will fall and if liquidity will fall then again money supply will decrease but if the RBI is going to buy bonds they are lending the money and if they are lending the money they are increasing the money supply so purchasing securities injects money so when you are a buyer of the bond you are injecting money into the economy right so that is how open market operations affect the monetary base now with the marginal standing facility it is a facility that allow bank to borrow funds from rbi in emergencies banks can access funds at higher rate than the repo rate ensuring liquidity during liquidity short so of course repo rates up hi hoga because it is for emergency so if it is more higher access to liquidity will be decreased and hence again shortage if you want to bring contraction in monetary policy that can be done now in all of these tools we have studied how is this affecting the economic growth we have start studying that okay according to these tools what will eventually happen is that the monetary supply money supply in the economy is going to increase or either decrease but how is it going to make changes in the economy so ho kya jayega that's what we will do so in whenever there comes changes in policy rate how does it affect the real economy actual mein how does it affect the process through which it affects is known as transmission mechanism so if we take an example if we lower the repo rate agar hum repo rate ko if we decrease what will happen the borrowing cost of commercial banks will decrease they will start demanding higher funds higher funds means more liquidity more monetary supply and when that happens there is more aggregate demand and aggregate demand more means aggregate supply will increase and hence the economic growth that is how the changes in the policy are actually going to affect the real economy right so this was all about the tools of the monetary policy so in the part 1 we have talked about monetary policy and its objectives and does it target inflation in part 2 we have learned that how the tools of monetary policy actually affect our economy so i hope this video will be useful to you If you find this video to be useful please share it among your friends like this video subscribe to our channel for more concept related videos for learning a lot more concept on economics
ओके बाय एवरीवन थैंक यू